Let's go meet an entrepreneur and through his story examine the fascinating forces driving the democratization of innovation. Meet Slava. Slava loves riding bikes in the city, and so does his friend. One night, the friend had his bike light stolen. Without his bike light, for safety and visibility, luckily he was okay. But Slava was determined to never let thieves hurt his friend or his fellow bicyclists again. That's when he decided to create a new kind of bike light that can't be stolen. Slava, you and I were business school classmates, and uh, I remember vividly you used to bike all the time. Yeah, I loved it because I could leave my apartment six minutes before class started, bike in as fast as I could, and I get into class on time. But I remember one morning uh, in October, I ran downstairs. My bicycle is gone, my lock is cut, and then at that point I just had to sprint to class. So I ran into class, 20 minutes late, all sweaty and frustrated, um, and it just I was absolutely infuriated. You know, I can relate to that. I had my bike connected to a rail, and I show up after class and the wheel is gone. Can't bike home, and uh, I laughed, but I was also frustrated, and I just left the bike there. Never took it back and actually never biked in Cambridge again. So you just gave up on it. <laughs> just yeah. let it go. Yeah, so I mean, it's a nuisance, but it can also be a hazard. Uh, a friend of mine actually had his bicycle light stolen from his handlebars, and he still had to ride home at, that night from work. Car didn't see him, smashed into him. He was okay, he didn't get too hurt, but what it helped me realize was that uh, bike theft and the theft of bike gear, it's more than just a nuisance. It can, it can be really dangerous, it's a real hazard. And what did you do? Talking to friends was where I started. It was an easy place to start. And then talking to a wider group of people who are kind of active users, uh, lead users, and finding out what they're doing around it. And what I found was that a lot of them are already cobbling together solutions for this. And you actually see it when you go outside. Start noticing this outside. Yeah, you give go, a few examples. Yeah, you go outside, start looking at bicycles, you'll notice two, th two ingredients uh, frequently, duct tape and zip ties. So the first anti-theft bike lights were bike lights that people would just rack duct tape around it. And that's how they prevent their bike lights from being stolen. Or they'd zip tie it on. And it was just enough of a nuisance for a thief to not bother doing that. So we knew that we were onto something when the lead users were actually starting to scratch their own itch and, and kind of solve their own pain. And, and once we started talking to that, them about that, not only were they saying, yeah, this is nice to have, they were saying, is, I need this, and in fact, I'm already trying to solve this myself. If you can solve this for me, I'll buy this product from you. And that was what prompted you to start Fortified. Yeah, exactly. What we realized was that nobody was standing for the urban cyclists. Nobody was making bicycles and gear that could survive in a harsh city environment and protect the urban cyclists. So that's why we started Fortified Bicycle, to protect urban cyclists and their gear.